I'm Logan Crawford, and right now on Spotlight, we're delving into a powerful book, a remarkable book, that is called Revived by Jesus Christ. It's written by Manuel Giorgi. After a near-death experience lasting 35 minutes, the author shares his powerful insights he received from Jesus about the end times, the nature of God, and the truth about the rapture. This first-hand account offers a riveting look at life, faith, and spiritual revelations that will leave you questioning everything you thought you knew. We're delighted to have this very talented author join us here today on Spotlight. We thank the team at Atticus Publishing for helping us put him in the spotlight today. And we ask viewers like you to support authors like him by subscribing to our channel and by purchasing his wonderful book. The links are below this interview. Manny, thanks for joining me here today on Spotlight. Yep. Thank you for being for letting me be here. Absolutely. This is quite a story. N near A near-death experience that lasted 35 minutes. That's incredible. Tell us a little bit what happened to you and how you got into that position. Um, what happened was it was um, on January 10th, 2018. I woke up at about nine o'clock like I always do. Um, I was off that work that day. So I went in the bathroom and I just collapsed. And I just fell out of the floor. Um, my father did pass away six months before. So I was actually staying with my mother to help her. So she heard me fall. Thank God. Yeah. Um, so she went in there. She heard my last gasp. Um, she tried shaking me and calling my name. I was already dead. So she called 911. And then she called... Um, both of my brothers, they both got there. Um, uh, the ambulance got there in about 10 minutes. They shocked me. Nothing happened. They put me on the Lucas machine, which is the automatic CPR machine. And they kept me on it. They pumped me with adrenaline. They tried everything they could. Still nothing. They shocked me again. Still nothing. Now, normally after 20, 25 minutes, they stop. They call it. But in my case, my uncle is a dispatcher for that fire department. So he heard the call and he came over to the house. So they kept going because of him, because they knew him. So after 35 minutes, I got a faint pulse. I was taken to the hospital. Once there, I went into AFib. I did die again in the hospital for another 10 minutes. Um, they finally hooked me up to the machines. Um, the machines were breathing for me. My kidney shut down. My liver shut down. They said I wouldn't make the night. I woke up three days later. Wow. And I was fine. No heart problems. No brain damage. Amazing. During that whole time, I was with Jesus Christ. Tell us about that part of the story, which is obviously the most incredible part of the story. Yes. Um, how did he appear to you? Um, tell us Tell us about that part. As, as soon as I collapsed, I became my spirit. And I found, I did see a bright light. Mm -hmm. And then my eyes adjusted. I was in a tunnel. I was heading upward. Um, up ahead of me was a fork. One went left, one went right. So I was pulled to the right, and I, for some reason, I slowed down. I looked over to the left, and it, it was like images just being captured. I knew that that, went, that way I went to hell. Mm. So I went to the right. I came to a stop. There was a structure in front of me. It was dark out, but the structure was very bright, and the door was open slightly. I heard the words come in. I immediately knew it was Jesus Christ. So I opened the door and went in. Um, the room was full of books, um, very neatly stacked. He was in the middle of the room at a desk, facing away from me, reading a golden Bible. So I felt myself gravitate toward him. I was about two feet away. I went down to my knees. I felt his love and his protection. All I wanted to do was worship him. He said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. He said, I'm going to give you some information to help you to get these inf to, to get this information out to everybody. 
Um, he placed his hand on my forehead. He gave me a whole bunch of information. Um, he gave me the Holy Spirit. He then got up, went out to a door behind him. I followed him, and we were on a beach. And from there, he spoke to me for a while. Um, he told me, uh, once again, he's, he said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. So I'm, I gave everybody a way out to get to heaven. He said, the problem is free will. And he said, right now, the father is very angry. He said, when he looks down at earth, he said, hardly anybody has the fear of God in them anymore. Mm. So Jesus did say, once, once the, everybody, the table is set. Once everybody arrives, I shall come again. What he meant by that is once everybody in the book of life has been saved, he's coming. And we're getting close to the end of everybody in the book of life being saved. Amazing. Were you a particularly religious person before this happened? Uh, I was very religious from a young age. I had the fear of God in me from when I was a child. Mm -hmm. But I grew up in the Catholic Church. Mm -hmm. And what I found out is when I came back and Jesus gave me all the information, I realized that the Catholic Church is more of uh, a false religion. Only because the amount of idolatry in it um praying to mary um god doesn't like that he doesn't like you praying to saints he doesn't like you praying to angels he doesn't like you worshiping statues mm -hmm. and when you walk in the catholic church where you see a statues of saints and mary mm -hmm. so everything in my room that i had that was catholic i felt this disgust in my stomach from god God just has a disgust toward it only because between that purgatory, purgatory, they believe in purgatory. God, Jesus said, there's no common day, no commendation for those that are in Jesus Christ. I'm sorry, condemnation. Yeah. So if that's the case, there's no purgatory. You can't right. suffer again. Um, so he gave me more information about that. Um, and, but the main message was the father is not angry. This new generation of children growing up do not know God. Um, family structure is gone. Um, they took prayer out of school. Um, 10 years later, what do we have? We have mass shootings in schools all the time now. So Jesus was really trying to tell me that he's no longer holding the father's hands back. Yeah. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. Um, part of the message, of course, was about end of the age. Yes. And tell us about that aspect of the conversation or message. Um, the thing is, is when Jesus returns, he hands over the church that he has saved um, over to the Father. If there's a rapture and Jesus already takes all of his people all the off the earth, all that's left is evil. Jesus says the meek shall inherit the earth, not the evil dwellers. And if everybody, if all God's people are already in heaven, then essentially you have hell on earth. There's no, there's no point in a second coming. He's not, he's already handed over the church. And a lot of the Bible verses that have to do that people use for a rapture are actually about the second coming. Tell us about writing this book. Um, was it easy to write? Did it feel like revelation? Were you able to recall your conversations and the messages that Jesus had given you? Tell us what writing this book was like. And how much time passed between your near-death experience or your death experience and uh, writing the book? Um, it took me a good five years to unpack everything that Jesus put in my head. I had to read the Bible three times. Mm -hmm. And one of the gifts God gave me was the ability to interpret the Bible verses. 
So it did take me, you know, three to five years to fully understand all the information that God gave me. So after about the five year mark, I have, I've already, I written one book. The problem was, is I didn't have the complete revelation. I couldn't remember the second half. So what happened was, is um, I still get a lot of revelations. I still get a lot of visions and a lot of dreams. So the, at the five year mark was when I wrote the second book. I had everything I needed, needed to know. I was able to interpret everything and put it out in a way that you can understand Jesus Christ. And also I but also putting tools to help you with your journey with Jesus Christ. Wonderful. Well, it's an important book. It's a powerful book written under the most extraordinary circumstances. Your near-death experience, which I basically say is a death experience. Yeah. It's like yeah. you died and came back, which is just amazing as well. The book yeah. is called Revived by Jesus Christ. After a near-death or death experience lasting 35 minutes, Manny shares his powerful insights that he received from the Lord Jesus Christ about the end times, the nature of God, and the truth about the rapture. This is a firsthand account that offers a riveting look at life, faith, and spiritual revelations that will leave you questioning everything you thought you knew. Manny, before we leave you today, anything you'd like to add, anything you'd like the audience to take away from your book? Yes. Um, one thing I would like to say is... Our human minds cannot comprehend the love that God has for us, the love and protection. Um, when you're a spirit, everything's heightened. Your knowledge, your feelings, everything is heightened. And when you feel his love and his protection, all you want to do is just kneel down and thank him and worship him. That's all that you want to do. I mean, I was just so overwhelmed with everything and all the things that he was telling me. I didn't even ask him anything. And I wasn't even thinking about family members that had passed. I was focused on him. And that's all I could focus on. I mean, his love, I would do anything for his love. I can understand why, you know, Abraham was willing to sacrifice his only son. I can understand why Daniel was not afraid in the lion's den. I can understand why the apostles did not care about getting beat, beaten up for spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's how powerful his love is. You will do anything for it. Amazing. Well, you've given us a great gift in writing this book. We appreciate it, and I appreciate your time today. Thank you for joining me, Manny. Yep, there I thank you. I appreciate it. To the folks at home, I'm Logan Crawford, thanking you for your time this time until next time on Spotlight.